Okay, so today we're going to be going through the Masson's Healthcare Voxel Care um, Full Orthotic Software. It's a cloud-based software, um, so the first thing you have to do is log on uh, via the Masson's portal. Um, we head up to the top right of the screen here to the login button. Um, for this example, we're just going to use a, um, a generic one, uh, just user one. You should be provided with your own username and password. You can put that um, into those fields. So from this screen, we can do most things. So this is, a, I guess, considered the home screen. Up the top right is the button that will always take you back to the home screen or start menu. Um, if we want to create an insole, we go to order insole. If we want to look at pre-existing orders, we go to orders. We'll start with ordering an insole. Cool. So when we're ordering an insole, we need an order reference first up. So with order reference, uh, we generally like to use something that will um, tell us who the clinician is. Uh, we want to tell us who the patient is, even if you don't want to use their name, use an identifying number. Um, it just allows us, when we're manufacturing for you, um, to track down who's done it and um, which patient it is. So if there's any issues, we can, we can contact you and ask. Under that, there's also patient data. Uh, you can fill in this if you want, um, but all we really need is the order reference. First thing we'll do is go to scan import because we want to import some data from um, a structure scanner. In our import screen, we have four options for 3D data. So we can use foot, which is for any sort of positive um, impression of the foot. So if we've got a filled cast or we've got an actual foot that's been scanned, foam box is any negative impression we have of a foot. So obviously a foam box, but also slipper casts or, or anything like that that's been cut down and scanned. Blueprint um, is a way of uploading, uh, I guess, uh, foot orthotic shapes from shoes. So you can use that as a guide to shape your orthotic to be milled out at exactly the right size for your patient's footwear. Uh, and the other one is insole. So if you have uh, an insole that the patient really likes and you've scanned the top of that, um, you can input that data as well. Um, the only thing with that one to take note of is it obviously doesn't um, uh, bring in the, the angular, external angular adjustments on that, on that patient's foot orthotic, so, uh, but does obviously copy that plantar, plantar surface in. We're going to be doing the phone box today, so we'll start with import left. Now, up the top here we have a scale, um, different uh, 3D scanners scan in different um, uh, scale measurements. Uh, most, of, there has been a couple that do it in millimetres, but most structure sensors do it in metres. So we'll select metres. And then we have our data. So we can grab with our left mouse button inside this uh, viewing pane and move it around and kind of see what we're dealing with. This one looks like it's been orientated completely upside down and the wrong way around, so we'll have to move it. The aim of this screen is to get whatever we need um, into this grey box uh, and aligned with this, um, what we'll call a ghost foot, I suppose. Um, so we want the toes pointing towards this end of the grey box, but whatever's in that grey box is going to get imported um, as our 3D data. The next most important thing are these views down the bottom. So we've got lateral, back and top view. These views also correspond with the movement buttons over here. So if we look from the top and press rotate, it's going to rotate in that plane of view. Another thing we can change is the amount it rotates and the amount it moves, because we're going to be doing some big moves. We'll change the rotation to 90. And we'll look from the side. We can zoom out with the scroll wheel to rotate around. Once again, the movements are tied in with um, the plane of view. Um, we can change the box dimensions as well, but they've already been set up pretty big, so if we look from the top again, at least we kind of got them in the grey box. The only problem now is the toes aren't facing the right way. So once again, we'll rotate it around, move it up, and we'll try and get the left one on its own, like that. So we can see that the grey um, box is just covering up the left hand, or left hand impression. And swing it around and just double check everything. Once we're happy with that, we press OK. Now, for the sake of expediency in this video, I'll just copy this one over. But first things first, we need to move these little alignment dots the red under the first med tassel head, the green under the fifth, and the blue in pretty much the center of the heel. I've also got a little, little guide down the bottom 
bottom right as well. Um, I'm just going to copy to the other foot, just for the sake of time. But if we wanted to upload a right impression, we'd do the same process again that we just, just did for the left. So once we're happy with that, we press OK. We've got our 3D data. I've added a patient identifier, so test will do for now. Next step is to go to next. Now we have our uh, product selection. We have the option of EVA, which is the most common, obviously, for, for uh, orthodis and the one we produce the most of. Um, another option is hard shell, so that's um, carved out of a solid block of polypropylene. We have soft prefab shell, so that is a um, semi-rigid um, shell that you can make an EVA top cover for that's, that's customised, so it's a, a semi-customised full orthotic. Uh, and the other one is WebCAD positive, so um, that carves out, um, I guess, a positive mould um, in a polyurethane foam, uh, which we can use to, to mould um, carbon orthotics or um, UCBLs and things like that. For today, we'll just stick with EVA. This is our design screen. So we have our left foot on the left hand side and our right foot on the right hand side. Uh, and we have some general settings over here we need to fill in before we start designing. So it always defaults to pair. We've got pair over there or we can do only left or only right if we need to. We've got a shoe size we need to fill out. So this lady, I'm just going to eyeball it and say it's a 38. It's in European shoe sizes uh, and you can come back and change this. So if I press OK now, that blue trim line will change. Um, in this software, they refer to trim lines as brand soles as well as a bit of a, um, a FYI there. The next thing to do is brand sole type. Um, basically, the silhouette will tell you the, the broad shape that's going to be produced. Um, sport has a narrow heel. Business is just sort of a regular shoe with a slightly squarer toe. Um, comfort, we do a lot of in our clinic. Extra depth, extra width. Shoes, and uh, three quarters of it, just a three quarter orthotic. The next one is insole cup. So we can do flat, low, medium, or high. Um, I personally like high, so I'll select high. With the high heel cup, um, we can also use this as an opportunity to learn about how some of the movement tools, and we can see how high a high heel cup is. Once I've selected that, we can see the numbers have appeared um, on our brand sole, or trim line. If I use the right mouse button, I can start moving this around. If you don't like using the right mouse button, you can select block view rotation and use the left, which is my preference. We can also use these views as well. So if we get lost, we can go top view, bottom, side, other side, rear, full view. If we're looking at the frontal view, we can see down the bottom here, we've got a six mil uh, base thickness with uh, 26 uh, millimeters at the top of that heel cup. Um, that would tell us that the heel cup is 20 millimeters high from the, the plantar surface. We can change this as well, um, but for the sake of this video, we'll, ju we'll just keep it simple. We'll keep moving through our general parameters and filling them in. We'll go to thickness. With thickness, um, the main thing to consider is whether we're going to be doing any sort of cutouts and any wounds or bony prominences, um, or the thickness of the top cover and what shoes they're going into. Um, the thickness is uh, literally the base thickness of the foot orthotic. So this, for example, this one, 6mm, it'll be 6mm under that flat area of the forefoot and 6mm under the heel as well. With, say, a 2mm or 3mm top cover, I generally like to make it 2.5mm. The only time I really sort of do this uh, any different would be if I want to have, um, I guess, cutouts or reliefs uh, under bony prominence or wounds or anything like that, where I'd, I'd make it about 4mm um, to allow for a 3 or 4mm uh, cutout underneath it. The next one is border thickness. Um, this one is more for the benefit of our text, so if we can make that 2.5, it would be greatly appreciated. It, it basically adds more uh, material between the inside and the outside of the orthotic. Um, making it a bit easier for um, for the guys to cover the um, the heel cup. Uh, this one is thickness removal. Uh, it basically removes uh, layers from the the plantar surface. Um, 
it was put in there if people want to take into account super thick top covers. Uh, it kind of keeps the foot shape in a roundabout kind of way. Um, personally, we don't use it that much, but it is there. The more important one is uh, remarks. So if we fill in remarks, the important thing with remarks is to let um, our text know what you want um, them to do. Um, I generally put in an EVA type. For this one, we're going to go with 40 short. Um, we are going to have a 2mm EVA and a dry feet top cover. Uh, and any other instructions as well. So if we say we wanted it glued halfway. And uh, he'll cut out. It's always important to say thank you at the end as well. Our next step is to select a material. I think we said 40 nanites, so we'll stick with 40 sure here. Once we've filled in our general uh, and material settings, we can move on to aligning 3D data. Now the three dots we put in initially has, have actually done a pretty good job of, of getting the, the foot uh, aligned. So when we put those dots in when we imported the data, we were letting the software know where that data is in space and, and the orientation of the foot. Um, and as I said, it's done a pretty good job of getting it within those um, trim lines, or brand soles as the software calls them. With 3D data, um, we have this purple cross. So this purple cross will appear um, whenever something can be moved. So if I grab the top point of that cross, I can rotate it from side to side, or pivot it from side to side. Um, the idea is to get that forefoot in the middle. Um, you can also grab the center of these purple crosses and move it around like that. So once again, if you ever see a purple cross, it means you can move it around. So the key thing to do now is to try and get the heel centered and the forefoot centered. And we want a little bit of green down the bottom here. So the trim lines or brand sole change color depending on where they are. So I can move the data around by pressing Control F mouse button. There's a heads up there and use the scroll wheel to zoom in and we can see there's a little bit of green down the bottom there. That means the 3D data is just touching that trim line. Red would indicate that it's inside, but there's not so much of a concern over there. And green, once again, means it's touching. Once we've got our 3D data aligned, that's it, pretty much in the center, center of the heel, center of the forefoot, and just touching down the back there, we can move on to our brand soles or trim lines. When I selected trim lines then, you can see that the tools change in the center and we can use some of these tools to adjust our trim lines. At the moment we've got our individual points so we can click on them and move them around but the better way of doing it is just to use our stretch tool. So we can do a four foot stretch to bring it out a bit and get that four foot more inside the trim lines. Um, there's also obviously back foot and global width. We'll press OK and we're done with that. At this point, because um, we've changed our uh, brand sole or trim line, we can copy that over. So every time uh, a modification appears down here or uh, in sole or 3D data, the bottom tool is always a, a copy to the other foot tool. So if I press copy to the other foot, that brand sole moves over to the right hand foot. So we would go and do our 3D data alignment first. So once we will pivot, maybe move it down just a touch cool now we're all set to go at this stage we've basically created a, a good total contact pair of foot orthotics they're going to be um, quite accurately carved out to the shape of your patient's foot um, but we also might want to add some modifications so for this lady i remember she had a bit of a bit of forefoot pain so we'll add a, a, um, a metatarsal bar now a lot of these modifications, they're all sort of designated by foot area. Um, a lot of these modifications are pretty much all controlled in the same way. They just um, affect the, the planar surface in a, in a different manner. Um, so obviously some of these domes or bars are going to raise things up. We've got um, wedges that do a similar sort of thing. Um, toe grips um, and midfoot. We're looking at things like fascia grooves. Um, arch adjustments, internal, external, and transverse. And under the heel, we've got all our raises and, and um, cuts.
cutouts and things like that for heel spurs. Um, and also the hard shell twist into, which is actually quite a good one for doing um, uh, external wedging. Cool. Um, so we'll add a bar. So I'll select bar. And obviously once that's selected, it's now appeared down here as an option. The metatarsal bar highlighted and it's appeared in the center. As I was saying before, we have a purple cross, so we can move that around by grabbing the center and the outside we can rotate it. This sort of second line here in from the border is the, the apex of the modification to the highest point. So that can be changed in a number of ways. We can use the settings button. It defaults to 5mm, which I generally find to be pretty good, um, but we'll make sure we can really see it. We'll bang it right up to eight and a half. There we go, we'll press OK. Um, I always like to do these modifications, um, oh sorry, I always like to add these modifications um, in this view. So up the top we've got four different views. of an outline mode, which is, which is what we're in now, uh, sorry, which is what we're in currently. Uh, so the intake, so the 3D data and just the outline of the brand sole. We also have a material view, which gives you an idea of what's going to be carved. Um, I generally go for the first option there. It gives you an idea of what is going to be milled out. We can see a very intense bar there. We also have a height view mode. This can be quite useful. We're going to make things look a lot more dramatic than they actually are. Um, the colors correspond with this scale down the bottom here. Um, in these numbers are in, in millimeters as well. Um, we have a contact view mode. Once again, there's a scale down the bottom to give you an idea of, um, uh, I guess, a, a gradiated view of, of where um, the orthotic will be pressing into the foot. Not unsurprisingly, underneath that big bar. Fantastic. So if we're happy with what we've done now, we can always copy it over to the right hand side and make whatever adjustments are needed. If we want to come back and work on our orthotic later, we can press save or we'll store project. If we want to get a manufacturer, we move on to save and next. All right then. Well, thank you for watching. Um, have a go with the software, play around with it, um, and uh, get in contact if you have uh, any questions at all. Thanks a lot for your time.